Hello citizens of the internet! How have you been? Spring is here! How are you feeling with all this light all of a sudden outside? I'm still trying to adapt. I finally get to sit down and talk you through my February favorites. I know it's late as usual but let's ignore this and get into the business. I also have to mention that I'm not quite sure when will this video be uploaded because my laptop is broken and I'm not quite sure when it will be fixed. Right now it's in the service and I'm not quite sure how much it will stay there. So yeah, this is it. Also, you might have already noticed, I got see-through bangs! What do you think? I honestly quite enjoy it. I had bangs in high school, but they were like straight up thick bangs. But right now it's more airy, if you get me, because it's like see-through bangs, it's not that thick. and. I honestly quite enjoy it. I was honestly a little skeptical because I'm the one that that gets annoyed when pieces of hair get stuck into my eyes, but I'm surprisingly digging it. Like I really like it. On to the actual favorites. This time I'm going to start with the absolute favorites. And they're not only February favorites, they will be lifetime favorites. But it just so happened that I got them in the month of February. These two things right here. I know if you're not familiar, you might ask what the hell is she talking about? They look like two books that kinda look the same. They're the albums that Bangton Boys, my boys, my sons, released last year. The most beautiful moment in life, part one and part two. A little funny story. <laughs> Obviously me and my stories. I got them separately. I first ordered, of course, the first part and then I said if it gets on time and everything is all right, I'll buy the second one too because it was actually my first because it was actually my first ever international order online, so I didn't know what to expect. And surprisingly, it arrived at my house. Like, for the second one, I had to collect it from the post office. But the first one came at my house. And when I ordered it online, I didn't look at the seller, so I didn't know who was going to like ship it and stuff like that. And my grandma like came into into my room and said, "Look, this is for you." And it had like Korean characters, like everything was written in Korean and stuff. And <laughs> like I was I didn't open it at first. Like I have to admit a few minutes I stared at the package and I asked myself, what the hell is going on? I didn't order anything from South Korea. Well, why is this here? And trust me, I thought someone was trying to prank me. Seriously. Seriously. But then I remembered, I don't know that many people and the people that I know wouldn't have think that far with a prank. Or maybe I'm underestimating them. I don't know. Anyways, it took me something to actually open it and find the album there. Like, yeah. <laughs> Stupid me. I'm sorry. Again, if you're not familiar, in South Korea, when they release albums, they also put random photo cards with random members in it. Like, you get an album and also a free photo card of a random member. Needless to say, somehow the luck was on my side and in the first part I got the photo card with Cookie! Look! Why am I shaking? What the hell? Look! Isn't he adorable? I feel like I'm always saying this. Isn't he adorable? He's much more than adorable. 
look. <laughs> and you also get like a flyer, which is written in Korean, with pieces of information if you would like to audition for their company. And I want to ask you, has anyone actually tried to audition for Big Hit? How did it go? I'm definitely going to do it. Um, joking, duh. <laughs> and in the second part, I got this photo card with Revmon. Look at how cute he looks. And it also has his autograph. It's obviously printed, but whatevs, I don't care. So I got the roommates. <laughs> what I love about K-pop idols albums is that they're so beautifully made like they're literally books with a CD in it like you get pages filled with photos from the official photo shoots and stuff like that they're just so beautiful and let me tell you the photo shoot for the first part is one of my favorites like let me I'll flip you through a few of these because they're so aesthetically pleasing, at least for me. Like, they're so beautiful. Like, let me show you. Let me show you. Like, here's one of my favorite photos of them all. Look how beautiful it is with the cherry blossoms. Like, it's literally like the perfect time right now. It's March and... It's literally the perfect time, like, this is exactly how it's outside right now. This photo of Suga is one of my ultimate favorites. I remember when I first got into them and I was looking through photos of them. I, like, I didn't even know which one he was. I just know that this photo spoke to me on another level. I just don't know. I would say his expression, but you would say, what the hell? He has his eyes closed. It's just so profound to me. I don't know. Just, I don't know. And they have like little poems written here and there. Like, wait a minute. Look, like here. It says, let it come, let it come, the day when hearts love as one. Let it come, let it come, the day when hearts love as one. Isn't this beautiful? You get to even write in there. Like, look. Who would do that, though? I'm not going, obviously, I'm not going to do a full review. Plus, Suga made one, so, yeah. The second one is more badass themed, but in a nice way. Look at Suga's photos. Oh, he looks so freaking gorgeous with that green hair. Look at these. Hobby and Ching Ching. Aren't these just gorgeous? Look at how beautiful they are. Here's Hobby with Glee. Look at how gorgeous they are. Oh, they're my little angels. Oh, look at how gorgeous they are. Oh. How bright they're smiling, literally, they all, they're all they all my angels. They're all my angels. Oh, I'm getting emotional. I just love these seven guys so much. Like, you already know I'm truly madly and deeply in love with Cookie. But honestly, all I want is to just spend one day with all of them. Like, just... All of us having fun together, nothing romantic involved. Duh. Honestly, I think I would just sit silently in a corner of the room and watch them while they do their own thing. Like, at some point, I think they would even get scared because they would forget I'm there. There you go, the fantasies of a 23-year-old involving seven guys. Yeah, what a waste, right? Back from Dreamland, another awesome thing that happened in February is that History, the K-pop band, had a concert in Romania. Yeah, you heard that right. They're also a boy band. I have to admit, I'm not their biggest fan, but for me it was quite special because, as you remember, in September I went to Luna Fly's concert, but as I said, their 
a group that mostly covers international songs. But compared to them, Kissery is actually a group of idols. They had a full-on performance with choreographies and dances and stuff like that. So it was something different for me to watch and I really enjoyed this experience. Because as I said, living in Narnia is hard. I, like, I would never expect a famous K-pop band to come into our country. Nope, never. That will never happen. I'm used to it though. I won't suffer, no. Like, I would say the chances of me traveling to South Korea to watch my favorite band perform live in a concert would be higher than the chances of them actually coming to Romania in a concert. Yeah, that's it. On to beauty stuff. The only thing that I have to talk about is my is this shit mask with red ginseng. It's from South Korea. One of my friends gave it to me last October or something. And I said then that I will keep it for a special moment. There's no there was no special moment whatsoever but I decided I should probably try it because it's been a long time since I got it so I should probably try it I'm not a beauty guru so I don't know what to say about it I just know that my skin felt very good after I used it and actually it was very moisturizing yes I said that well keeping the mask thing I bought this mask yep that you like put it right here I honestly wanted a black one, like a normal black one, but when I went on the website, I saw this and I thought it looks so cute. For me, this mouth looks like Rila Kumas and that's why I liked it. It's cute and it's not in your face. And after I placed the order for this mask, like two or three days after, I've seen photos of my boys at the airport and V was wearing one of these. Well, I'm not sure if it was an exact one. It just looks exactly like this one. I literally wore this outside when it was like freaking cold because I have I have problems with breathing on my nose, so that means I'm automatically using my mouth more. And when it's cold outside, because of that, my throat gets affected. But surprisingly, using this mask prevented my throat from getting hurt. No more sore throats and flu because of this mask. Thank you. These boots, oh my god, they're dirty. I know, I know, I know. They look a little masculine. And I quite love them because of that. They look so vintage -y. book Bookwise, I have quite a few. First of all, Calm the Book. This is actually an app called Calm and they released a book. It says Calm the Mind, Change the World. It's a book that helps you like meditate and relax. It's actually an interactive book because there are pages where you can fill in. Like for example here, which it says, date, what made you feel calm today, what are you grateful for, and what were three highlights of today. Honestly, even though it's a book that's supposed to help you relax and meditate, I still think you need to be in the mood to write in it. Like, to take your time and actually reflect on what you're writing here. So, that's why I didn't use it yet. Keeping the meditation theme on, I got three coloring books for adults. Don't think bad thoughts just because you heard for adults. Here they are. They're literally filled with nature-related things, like flowers, butterflies, and whatsoever. The first one looks like this. It says nature and relaxation. Color in and be 
Zen. I already started this one, as you can see. It has patterns. Like here it says, have you smiled today? The second one, it says floral harmonies. First of all, it like shows you different ways of coloring. On each page there's a quote related to flowers. And this thicker one that says secret places, adventures in ink and imagination. Like, look at this. What? It's so wonderful. How can I even color in in this? Oh my god. Like, watch this. <laughs> I'm a pretty patient person, but I also get bored very easily. So knowing me, I think these three books will last me at least 50 years. On to actually readable books. First book is this one. It's Yonmi Spark. Uh, let me find the actual English title. I have it written in my notebook. In order to leave a North Korean girl's journey to freedom. You guys, this book is life-changing because of the terrifying things she wrote in here. It's completely terrifying. We are born in the same year, but the things she went through are indescribable. Like, you have to read the book to actually understand what's going on in North Korea. What literally sent shivers throughout my whole body was actually the first phrase in the prologue. It says, in the cold and dark night of 31st of March 2007. Like, these things happened a few years ago. But again, the horrifying things she describes make you think that this happened 70 or 80 years ago. It's terrifying to think that even right now, as I'm filming this video, someone might experience the same things she experienced. And it's actually a reality, not a made-up story. I totally recommend you this book. This will make you reflect on your own life on a totally different level. And I'm not going to start a whole discussion about how we take for granted everything we have and stuff like this. No. You go read this yourself and tell me what you think. On a slightly more positive note, the second book is Taylor Jenkins Reads book Forever Interrupted. I actually prefer the title that was translated into Romanian more. It would be roughly translated as Forever United. It sounds nicer this way, in my opinion. The back of the book kind of spoiled it for me, like it, it literally tells you what happens that triggers everything in the book. Because of that, I had a totally different expectation from the book. I'm not saying that I didn't like it just because what I thought would happen didn't happen. It was an easy read mainly because it has very short chapters and the chapters are, I would say, divided. Like, how do I explain this? Like, let's take the spoiler. So yeah, the spoiler is what happened that triggered everything in the book. There's a chapter with what happened before the spoiler and the second one is what happened after the spoiler. So everything happens in parallel in this book. That's why I think the book like gets you going and you finish it quickly. I hope I made myself clear somehow. <laughs> On to food stuff. These random cookies. They're soft muffin cookies. I have to admit they're literally the softest thing ever. Like they literally melt into your mouth. 
I bought them when I visited my aunt who lives in the countryside. So I bought them from a local shop from there and that's why I kept the package because I thought they're so good that I have to find them back in, my, back in the city. And I did and I even found them in our local market. But I couldn't find the exact ones though. The options were with hazelnut and another ones with white chocolate and cranberries. And I have to tell you, I'm not really a big fan of nuts. That's what she said. And also, I don't really like fruity flavor stuff. Can this video get more innuendos, please? So yeah, but from those two options, I chose the ones with white chocolate and cranberries because, duh, white chocolate. Idols Athletics. It's a show in South Korea where idols gather together and compete in different athletic things. I obviously didn't watch the entire show, but I seen a few clips with my boys and I'm including this in my favorites because of nostalgic personal reasons. Believe it or not, this girl right here practiced almost six years of athletics. So watching my boys run around the athletic field and stuff made me think of the times I used to do that, although I was never good at running. My heart couldn't take in that much pressure, so I would always feel suffocated. But instead, I really enjoyed and I was pretty good at long jump, believe it or not. Yep, yep. This girl right here that looks as she looks right now used to have a little athletic part in her and I'm kind of proud of that. Also another type of show is like a web series. It's called Flower Boy Bromance. It's about like a friendship between two well-known celebrities and the first pair was V from Bangton Boys and the actor Kim Min Jae. They were basically filmed as they were hanging out to like show as I said before, the friendship between them. They like went to get a massage and then on like a date in the skating park and because it was V's birthday, Min Jae surprised him with a birthday cake. This month I watched the drama Healer. It's so freaking amazing. It's an action type of drama, like of course it has a love story but it's not centered around that. In my opinion, the storyline is somewhat familiar to Pinocchio's in the fact that there are some events that happened in the past but get resolved in the present days as the drama goes along and there are all these characters that are connected to each other but they don't know that yet they find it at like the end of the drama and yeah it's it's awesome i apologize i'm not good at reviewing anything whatsoever so i hope you somehow understand something of what i'm always trying to say yeah from the soundtrack i loved Ben, you, and Tay, what my eyes say. Talking about music, first of all, Winner, the K-pop band, had their comeback, I think it was exactly the 1st of February, yes, and they came back with three songs, but I only love two of them. The first one, that the one that I love the most, it's actually sang by only one member, it's called I'm Young by Taehyun and Baby Baby, which is sang by the entire band. I'm Young, it's more of a ballad, like emotional one. And Baby Baby also has an emotional feel to it. Also a comeback I was excited about was Taemin's because, because they said that for his album 
he collaborated with Bruno Mars. And you guys know I'm a huge Bruno Mars fan, so I was kind of shocked and excited. And it turns out that Temin's song, Press Your Number, is actually one of Bruno's old unreleased songs. If you're an old Bruno Mars fan, or I should say hooligan, but I don't consider myself one, uh, you will know which song I'm talking about. Temin's song is called Press Your Number, Bruno's song was called Press It, and it had a totally different meaning to it. I'm not sure if I can include this in, but Bruno's lyrics in the chorus were Press your body on my body, do it fast, do it slow, you control the tempo. But obviously, Temin's is a little different. It has Korean lyrics that are totally different. Musically wise, the song is still the same. Zion T, no makeup. Why haven't I searched for Zion T songs? before. They're so nice and make you feel so good. Like, even though you're not into K-pop, I suggest you to search this song. I'll put the song in the description box, as I, I normally do, and you're, if you're not into K-pop, you can mute it, like, leave it there with no sound, and just read the English lyrics and I'll guarantee you, they will put a smile on your face. Yep. Just go do that and let me know what you think in the comments. Zane, it's you. God, I missed those high notes. You feel me? Also, in the month of February, I quite enjoyed Bangton Boy's song, Look Here. It has such a flirty vibe to it. I, I really like it. Jason Derulo, Marry Me. This has like a funny backstory to it. My munchkin, Lexi, hi, if you're watching this, watched an episode of American Hustle Life. It's a show that Backton Boys filmed in 2014 when they went to the US. In that episode, as far as I remember, V, Suga, and Chungu, Cookie were at their vocal practicing lessons and for that Kugi chose to sing Jason Derulo's song and since the day my munchkin watched that episode she kept on singing that song over and over again and that got me into the mood for listening to it and I listened it for quite a few times. <laughs> I saved the best for the last. I'm talking about Cookie's cover of Justin Bieber's song, Nothing Like Us. I swear to God, he finds the perfect time to post these covers. He's like, yeah, I think I'm going to post this cover today at this exact hour, just because Hatterina is feeling the worst and she needs me. Like, what? I'm telling you guys, we have a special connection. <laughs> After he posted the cover, he wrote a few tweets saying that whenever he covers a song in English, he searches for the meaning of those lyrics. He kind of advised the fans to do the same. Like, go check the meanings of the lyrics and then come back and listen to his covers once again. And since, besides this cover, the last two were Fools with Repmon and Tori Kelly's Paper Hearts, I'm like, what are you trying to tell us? Did a girl dare to break your heart? Like, just come tell your mama and she'll take care of it. Like, no one touches my cookie especially plays with his heart and dares to break it. Guys, 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 
I'm kidding. Like, what the hell? I'm not trying to create conspiracy theories here. I'm just joking, okay? Calm down. But no, seriously, this, this cover literally breaks my heart. When it comes up in my playlist, I actually try to avoid it because it puts me in the most depressing mood ever. Like, his voice sounds so... how do I say this? Like, so finished. Like, like he's actually saying his last words. Like, dude, it's so... Uh. And when I happen to actually listen to the song, if I have any piece of heart left, it breaks at the line where it says, you know there's no one I can relate to. Like that that's that's the that's where I can take it anymore. And I'm like, no shit, stop. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, his voice is like my favorite sound. But like that, like heartbroken, no. I, I don't want to hear it ever again. No, please stop. It's like Jesus, I need to live my own life, okay? And talking about the meaning of the songs in general, like, I totally understand him. Jesus Christ, I'm not a musician, but if I want to learn a song, I, I have to relate to it somehow. Like, even one line that I can relate to, it's enough for me. I, I, I live by the motto, I live by the motto, if I can't feel it, I can't sing it. So, I totally understand him on this. I know I'm annoying as hell, but please go listen to his cover, go listen to his wonderful voice, like... Jesus. I probably shouldn't expose my boyfriend that much, right? But please go check it out. Another random thing is actually a Korean love poem. One day, as I had nothing else better to do, I decided to search on Google for Korean love poems. And the first one, the first link that popped up was a blog where there were three short poems written by Ichong Hanim, if I'm remembering correctly. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, it's Ichong Hanim. One of those three poems spoke to me on another level. I'm sorry, but for me, South Korea isn't resumed to only great-looking guys with awesome voices. Like, I'm really interested in their, their culture and traditions, mainly because, surprisingly, we have very similar cultures, which is quite shocking because, as nations, Throughout history, we were never related. So yeah, that's why I want to, like, find more about, like, their literature and stuff. It's called Close to You, and it sounds something like this. Although I wanted to come closer, I couldn't possibly go closer, because the more I come closer, I felt that the more you will drift away from me. If I come closer, if I really do, I feel that you will leave me forever. That's why I couldn't come closer. If you'd leave me, I'd be left with those pain and loneliness. I didn't think I would be able to handle it. So although I wanted to come closer, I didn't dare to come closer. I longed to have one moment close to you, but you would leave me forever. So I kept the distance between us as I wanted to be at a place where I will always be able to see you. Isn't this just purely wonderful? Video-wise, I watched a lot of videos on how to cut your own bangs. But needless to say, I still asked my mom to do it for me. I also liked Dan and Phil's playing Chimbot video. And... Oh, yes! Jason's vlog where he proposed to Sammy. Ah, they're engaged. That's so wonderful. I'm so happy for them. 
when I talk about videos, I always only mention the funny ones that are like sketches and stuff, but I also watch a lot of hauls or makeup tutorials and stuff, but I don't always mention them. But that doesn't mean I'm not watching them. What am I even saying? What the hell? I also have a favorite YouTuber this month. Her channel is called Speishi. S-P-E-I-S-H-I. I hope I pronounced it correctly. I think she's Singaporean, but she's so cute and funny and bubbly and I she doesn't have a lot of videos but she's so lively in her videos that it's impossible for you to don't to not get happy when you watch them the breeds need i say more i think not adele you slay us you're you're amazing hands down you're amazing you so deserved everything and I'm done with these favorites too. Woo! Before I go, I should warn you that I won't be able to post for a while just because my dad got two weeks off from work. And I can't do anything while he's at home. I hope you understand me. So I'll post eventually at some point. But until then... Bye! Take care of yourselves!